Olivia is speechless. What kind of hobby it was? How could he ask a woman undressed directly? Capturing Vincent's disgusted expression, Olivia thought of something, looked down at her cream-stained clothes, and instantly understood. Olivia thought about it, and said roundly, I don't have clothes to change, so I can't take it off. I will change it when I get home, may I? Dean, Wisnavel reminds you to click the subscribe button in the bottom right corner to read the complete novel. Her response was a spare shirt that the man had taken out of nowhere. At this time, she had to change her cloth. Olivia had no choice. Choice, but to take off the dress. However, the zipper on the back stuck just after being pulled down two centimeters down. Olivia struggled there for a long time and still not managed to deal with it. She had to ask for help. The zipper is stuck. It seems to be stuck in my hair. Vincent glanced at her extremely impatiently. Geez. He leaned closer to ruffle her hair, and with the two drew closer, the sound of breathing entangled inexplicably. Don't drag, it hurts. Be gentle, don't damage it. When backing Todd Barton's house, Olivia said to Vincent, I'll go change, and about to leave for the dressing room right after she spoke. Your stuff is in the next room. Vincent said unhurriedly. The engagement night is over, and Olivia doesn't live here. Sooner or later, they are about to dissolve the marriage contract. Does she want to occupy half of his room? Thought Vincent. Olivia couldn't help rolling her eyes. Stingy. She was much happier in the next room. She didn't want to sleep on the floor anymore. Get dressed and come over here. I have something for you. The man said as Olivia headed out. Olivia changed into a home outfit, thinking secretly what he was going to give her. Could it be the gift he said last time? Vincent took out a box from the drawer and handed it to her. The gift I said before. Olivia opened the box curiously and saw a piece of narrow and long paper at the top. A check? Olivia's mind was turning a hundred times and she was a little secretly happy. Is this an advanced payment? Wouldn't it be good? Would she accept it? In the man's meaningful gaze, she picked up the paper and turned to look back. When her eyesight touched the content above, her breath stopped and the whole person froze like a statue. Familiar? The man smiled at the corner of his mouth and the smile was extremely cold. He opened his lips. What is written on it? Read it to me. Olivia spat out with difficulty. Read. Olivia immediately opened her mouth. Account ZZZ, password 4716823. What else? Olivia glanced guiltily at both sides, licking her lips. For stars for appearance, two stars for professionalism, and one star for technical ability, overall poor evaluation. After saying that, she waved the paper in her hand innocently. What is this? Why don't I understand? He was testing her, absolutely, and she could not be recognized. It was left to me by a damned woman. Vincent said slowly, the woman is about the same size and weight as you. She was sitting on him in the bathroom that day, feeling exactly the same as that night. Really? Now it's popular among little girls to lose weight. My weight is very common. Olivia smiled with little confidence. Oh. Vincent suddenly reached out and pulled her into his arms. And the other big hand lifted her dress, revealing her waist. His fingertips rubbed against her ECG tattoo. This is also common? When he saw this tattoo through her clothes, he didn't know how surprising it was. In order to find her, he he spent a lot of energy. Not long after that night, he received news that Grandpa was suddenly uncomfortable and hurried over. When he returned, he saw an empty and messy room, and the paper at the head of the bed flashed into his view. Olivia was shocked. When did this man find out? She hadn't had time to wash it off. The skin on her waist tingled at his touch, and she pimped twice to slyly argue. Did you say tattoo? The pattern was very popular at the time. Vincent found that he really underestimated the tenacious spirit of Olivia. Where is the tattooist now? Died. Olivia blushed sadly and said regretfully, last year. Vincent laughed a few times and was exasperated as his chest shook twice in a row. He took a document from the side table, how to explain this. Olivia picked it up suspiciously and took a closer look, and her heart became completely cold. That was a handwriting identification result. One of the two specimens identified was the words on the paper, and the other was her notes. The appraisal opinion was written, the two written contents were written by the same person. Olivia was cold all over, and her head was spinning rapidly. When she was silent, Vincent lit a cigarette and held it diffusely to her mouth. Olivia put on a remorseful look. I'm sorry, I was wrong, I really didn't know it was you. Vincent narrowed his eyes dangerously and slowly spat out a smoke with a cold tone. So you just grabbed one casually? In other words, if it was not him that night, would it be another man? The temperature in the room suddenly dropped and cold air pressure ran wildly. Olivia shivered and tried to nod, but shook his head intuitively. Ordered gigolo often? The first, the first time. She was not a casual person, and that was the only thing she could do in a critical condition. Vincent Vincent was quite satisfied with this answer. He moved closer, one star? Five stars. Olivia stretched out her hand, with five fingers straight, trying her best to keep her eyes sincere. Actually, it doesn't blame on you. I know you don't have much experience in that respect. Vincent burst into anger, and he found that she was really ignorant. Seeing Vincent's expression, she reminded in a small voice, I paid. She didn't eat without paying. It was like ordering takeaway food. Couldn't you comment on the food when you have paid? Thinking of the hundred dollars, Vincent was so angry that his liver even got hurt.
hurt. No one dared to insult him like this. Olivia saw Vincent's face black as hell and thought everything was over, so she seized the opportunity to get up from him like a loach and ran to the door desperately. When she was about to see the dawn of victory, Olivia twisted the doorknob hard and found that it couldn't be twisted at all. Master, the door is broken. Andy shouted outside the door. Find someone to repair it if it's broken, said Olivia in a huff. G-Bird has sent all the servants go home. We can only wait for tomorrow. Ma'am, please take care of Master tonight. While inside the door, Olivia collapsed her shoulders with a surge of desperation. Vincent was still in place, just watching her go from heaven to hell, feeling inexplicably relieved. He fiddled with the gift box and teased her like a pet cat. Don't you keep looking? There is something else below. Olivia turned around carefully and stretched her neck to look at the box she had just seen. There was a black partition under the note at that time. She thought the box contained the note only. So is there anything below? Under the man's forced gaze, she walked over and removed the partition. And when she saw what was inside, her face suddenly burst into red. What inside the box were? Dozens of condoms. She took off her hands like holding a bomb and threw the box on the table. What are you giving me this for? Aren't you writing those sentences to imply that I should practice more? He leaned his chin on his fingers and tilted his head towards the box, said in a lazy tone. Here's your $100. Olivia's throat choked. He bought her $100 for this? Holding the breath in her chest, she forced her face to smile. You keep it to yourself. Seeing that Olivia was always one meter away from him, Vincent lowered his eyes and slowly turned the wheelchair to the bedside, ordering like a king. Come and help. I want to sleep. Olivia did not move. Shall I say it a second time? If I help you, will you just let me go? She tried to make a deal with him. I can think about it if you come over. Olivia had no choice. She moved over cautiously. As soon as her hand just touched his arm, she was caught. In a whirlwind, she fell onto the bed, and the man just pressed down upon her, with no gap between them. The man lowered his voice and asked coldly by her ear, Do you think I will let you go after all the stupid things you have done? A burst of hot breath exhaled on the contours of his ears, and Olivia became exasperated. You liar. What do you want from me? You can't waste. We should try hard to use it up. Vincent touched the box and deliberately scared her. Olivia took a glance at the box uncomfortably, and there were dozens of them. The man's hand had already penetrated into her dress, and she screamed, But Andy is outside the door, aren't you afraid he knows? Vincent stopped his hands and looked at the woman beneath in confusion. What are you talking about? Olivia immediately covered her mouth, and her voice trembled. I won't tell anybody, just let me go. She could fight with Jessica, flattered Greg, being as flexible as she could, but she really didn't know how to deal with this man. Vincent pondered for a few seconds. After clarifying the implied meaning of Olivia, he slowly closed his eyes. His temple jumped suddenly, and he had a headache. He kind of got it. This woman was his nemesis. He really wanted to pry her mind off to see what was inside. Vincent secretly cursed and gritted his teeth word by word. Why did I sleep with you if I was gay? Does this mean he doesn't like men? Olivia thought. Olivia was stunned, tears hanging on her trembling slightly long eyelashes, and she remembered what Sophie once said. So, did she straighten Vincent? The sudden silence of the Olivia displeased Vincent. He squeezed the soft flesh under his palm. Olivia snapped back, struggling even more intensely. It would be even worse if he liked a woman. She was even more inescapable. Vincent almost couldn't help himself and suppressed her legs with his big hands. You really don't want to get out of bed, do you? The strain that Olive had been tightening for the whole night was finally broken when he threatened her, and she suddenly began to cry. Vincent froze for a moment. Her inexplicable cry made him very annoyed. He said angrily, I haven't done anything yet. What are you crying for? Olivia ignored him and continued to cry. Vincent took a deep breath and tried to beat her up, but when it came to his mouth, it became, I won't pursue it. Don't cry. The crying stopped abruptly. Really? You promise? She asked, with her eyes wide open and watery. Vincent gave an extremely perfunctory reply. After getting the promise, the two did not speak for a long time. Olivia smelled the faint smell of tobacco on him and couldn't help but fell asleep. She was already exhausted after the mess all night. Vincent's physical and psychological desire were not extinguished when he saw her sleep soundly, and a faint sense of powerlessness emerged. He wanted to strangle her. Early in the morning, Olivia woke up, and the first scene when she opened her eyes, she saw Vincent changing his clothes, and she was a bit dumbfounded for a while. She had to admit that this man's face and body were really good looking. The man twisted his head as if by induction. She immediately closed her eyes and pretended to sleep. Vincent ruthlessly took a bath towel and threw it in her face. Stop pretending and get up. Olivia hesitantly asked, May I ask you one more question? Why did you go to Heaven's Temptation to be a pimp? Well, for work. Vincent didn't want to pay attention to her at all. Thinking about it for a second, if he didn't explain, she would have tons of strange things in her head started to conceive on him. I just stayed in Jason's territory that night.
night. That's the reason, so she accidentally got into his room by mistake? Olivia glanced at him, thinking thoughtlessly. It would be better to run into a real pimp. You can just pay and pat the ass and leave, so as not to cause so many after effects. Then why are you putting up the sign? It makes people misunderstand. She mumbled. Vincent suspiciously asked. What sign? Olivia explained. The sign for seeing clients, the rules here, the hooker and pimp working inside will have a sign hanging outside their room. Vincent narrowed his eyes. Olivia saw a sudden drop in air pressure around him, while an alarm sounded in her head, and she just stood up and slipped away. I'm leaving, bye. Olivia's class schedule was full in the morning, so she came to school early. Just as she took her seat, Maggie came to her. Maggie knocked on the Olivia table. Come out, I have something to tell you. Olivia put the bag on the desk and followed Maggie out. On the top floor of the teaching building, Olivia followed Maggie and looked at her suspiciously. What are you going to say? Maggie stood still with an obscure expression. You deliberately set me up at the banquet, don't you? Olivia raised her eyebrows, hard to tell? Just a thing that a fool could understand. As for pulling her out again to confirm it? I don't mean that, I mean the words you said. Maggie said impatiently. She remembered Olivia said to her that day. Did you actually hear what you heard? Have you seen with your own eyes? Not mentioning sometimes what you really saw is not always true. And she set her up right after leaving those meaningful words. Maggie was so dizzy and exasperated that at the time, and she absorbed the deeper implication only after back home and calmed down. It seemed that Olivia was telling her that none of what Jessica said was true. Moreover, thanks to Olivia, Maggie learned the lesson by experiencing herself. Now think about it. It seemed that from the very beginning, when she barely knew Olivia, she had judged her under Jessica's indicative words, trying to help Jessica out. But Olivia had never done anything bad to her, and had never done anything bad to others in front of her. Olivia leaned against the wall, looking at Maggie, who was giving the speech hesitantly, thinking that this Maggie was not stupid. She never expected her to understand. Maggie licked her lips and lifted her chin with a proud look. Anyway, I was here just to tell you that I doesn't care about the things at the banquet. You don't have to be scared every day. As for me, I'm not a person with big breast, but no brain. I have my own thinking ability. We just keep this distance in the future. After all, I still don't like you. Olivia nodded in agreement. What a coincidence. Me too. Maggie snorted coldly and walked past Olivia, while there happened to be a stone in front of her. She was wearing a pair of high heels, and the whole person was going to fall onto the ground when she accidentally stepped on it. Olivia quickly grabbed her. However, her hand slipped because of Maggie's pouncing and Maggie fell hard on the ground finally. Maggie's arm was ripped, the left side of her body was all stained with dust, and her exquisite hair was tied up and scattered. Hey, don't cry, get up, I'll take you to the infirmary. Olivia was extremely speechless, watching Maggie acting like a baby. Maggie held back her tears to save face, and headed towards the infirmary under Olivia's help. The doctor said it was no big deal after checking the injury, and then rinsed the wound on Maggie's arm with disinfectant water, and the painful young lady screamed. When they returned to the classroom, Lucy Lee and Susan were surprised to see Maggie in a mess, while Olivia was normal as before. Susan didn't react much while Lucy Lee turned anxious instantly. How dare you to bully Maggie, believe it or not. Class begins. The teacher came in from outside and placed a book on the table. Lucy Lee had no choice but to give in and glared at Olivia fiercely. Olivia came home at night, and as soon as she entered the house, she noticed that the atmosphere was tense. She stepped to the living room and saw her father sitting on the couch with an angry look. Greg said with a sullen voice the first time she saw him. Kneel down. Olivia put the bag aside and asked calmly, Dad, did I do anything wrong? Greg snorted coldly, you have the nerve to say that? Having no patience for the following words by Olivia, he threw the phone on the table. Watch yourself. Olivia glanced at Jessica, then stepped forward to pick up the phone. The phone rested on a video interface. Rooftop, she, Maggie. The video was only a few minutes long. She and Maggie were standing. Then, Maggie left and passed by her when her body suddenly went sideways. The picture gave the illusion that it was she who had pushed Maggie to the ground. Olivia thought to herself, this video had only two possibilities. One, Maggie colluded with others to set her up on purpose. And the other, someone who just happened to meet and photographed. Olivia was more inclined to the second. Maggie's series of reactions didn't look like faking. The person who made the video deliberately sent the video to Greg, obviously trying to make Greg mad at her. Olivia looked at Jessica without a trace. She knew what happened now. I didn't push her. Greg was even more angry seeing that she did not admit her mistakes. He pointed his index finger at her with disappointment in his eyes. Good, you still don't admit it even if the evidence is right in front of your eyes. Kneel down, otherwise, I don't have a daughter like you. Olivia didn't kneel, and her heart was full of grievances. Out of the corner of her eyes, she could see Jessica who was laughing and watching the play, but she was firm and silent. Seeing Olivia so ignorant, Greg slapped her hard in anger. Olivia was knocked directly to the ground, which showed how powerful this slap was. Seeing that Olivia was beaten, Jessica slowly stood up to be a peacemaker. Dad, don't hit Oli, she's still young. She lifted Olivia, and looked at the slap print on the face of Olivia, smiled at the bottom of her eyes, and 
asked lovingly, does it hurt? It's all swollen. Greg closed his eyes, not wanting to see Olivia. He waved his hands and told Jessica, hurry up and take her to the church to apologize. Jessica apparently had already prepared with all the gifts and pulled the silent Olivia towards the outside. They reached the courtyard of Old Palace by car. It was only after the arrival of Olivia that she found the church family also lived here. Olivia thought, coming to the church family and meeting Maggie would make everything clear. Unexpectedly, she was so unlucky that Maggie was not at home. It was Robert Church who saw them. Jessica explained the intention. Robert Church heard that Olivia pushed her daughter and naturally had no good expression on his face. He recalled the event at the banquet. At that time, he had to behave tolerantly but actually he did not like the white. Last time at the banquet, I thought that Miss White was a reasonable person, but it turned out that you had such a venomous heart. If my daughter said a few more words then, would you push her off the rooftop? If so, I would like to make Maggie thank you for not killing her. This charge was much bigger than pushing Maggie. At this moment, an old man went over with a cane. The old man had sharp eyes. As the helm of the church family, the founder of the church group, he preserved a dignified bearing. Olivia's eyes suddenly lit up and shouted in surprise, Grandpa. None of them noticed the person who came from behind Jeff Church, and Olivia had already trot over and hold the old Barton's arm. The old man patted on Olivia's hand gently. Olivia, why are you here? Olivia lowered her head, not knowing what to say. No one listened to her explanation, the video was so tricky that she was forced to come here as if she really pushed Maggie with a bad heart. If grandpa knew that, he would definitely not like her. Olivia became more and more frustrated. She liked the old man very much. Eric Barton actually heard their conversation before, pretending to be confused. Oli, did you push Maggie? Old Barton's inscrutable look made people hard to understand his attitude. Olivia shook her head, no, grandpa, I didn't push her. Jessica bit her lip. I don't know the situation either, it's just someone sent me a video, you will know what happened after watching this. So people watched the video, and everyone kept silent. No, I wanted to help her at the time. Olivia explained anxiously that she could be misunderstood, but she didn't want grandpa to lose face because of her. At this time, Maggie came back from the outside and saw a bunch of people in the living room, stunned for a moment and said, so lively here. The party came back and it was clear as soon as they asked. As a result, Maggie listened to the whole story, and it was like listening to the fantasy of Arabian Nights. She said with a superior face, Are you kidding me? How dare she pushed me? And if it was she, I'm not letting her go easily, okay? I fell on my own, and Olivia wanted to help me. The truth was clear, Jessica couldn't believe it and secretly squeezed the phone. Olivia originally thought that everything was over, she thought to herself that it would be enough to get her own innocence back. Unexpectedly, Old Barton was unwilling to do so, and he said in a sullen voice, It is clear that someone has the intention to deliberately destroy the relationship between the White family and the Church family, and made use of the young kids. How villainous it is. Jeff Church nodded, absolutely. We can't just let it go. Look it up. I want to see who is framing my granddaughter. Old Barton said with a serious expression. After listening to Master Barton's words, Jessica nodded in response, and there was a cold sweat on her back. When Master Barton looked at Olivia, all the vigor around him dissipated, as if he had returned to the kind old man. Talk to Grandpa for a while, and I will ask Vincent to pick you up later. Or you two can just stay here tonight. Hearing Vincent's name, Olivia was sitting precariously and hurriedly refused. Thank you, Grandpa, but I will just go back with my sister. Thinking of the last experience, the last person Olivia wanted to see was Vincent. Master Barton just thought that Olivia was shy and took out his mobile phone and dialed it. It was Grandpa's phone call, and Vincent would never delay. Grandpa, what's the matter? Because Master Barton was in the church family, he did not say anything in detail, but asked him to come to the courtyard to pick Olivia up. Vincent lowered his eyebrows and felt a little nervous in his heart. Why did that girl run to grandpa without any reason? His words changed, and his voice was clear and magnetic. Got it. I will pick her up. Putting down the phone, Vincent started to contact Dandy, and asked him to drive over. By the time Vincent arrived, Olivia had already followed Master Barton back to Barton family. Andy pushed him in, and at first glance, he saw Olivia standing honestly beside his grandfather. Master Barton wanted to talk to his grandson more, but on second thought, Olivia didn't live in Vincent's house now. They were engaged when they first met, and they had little time to get a along with each other. It's better to spare time for the two to get in touch with each other more. Thinking about this, Master Barton found an excuse to go upstairs, and before he went upstairs, he specially let Andy go. Only two of them were left in an instant, and Olivia suddenly became tense. Vincent looked at her with a faint smile, and suddenly grabbed her wrist and pulled it into his arms. Olivia was stunned, and her whole body fell on him. Almost the whole body of Olivia was nestled in Vincent's arms. The two looked very intimate. The hot body temperature and the intertwined breath made the air ambiguous. Vincent Vincent raised his lips with a smile, his thin lips stuck to the side of Olivia's small ear, but his eyes were extremely indifferent, and what he said made Olivia's face pale. We have just been apart for several days, and do you want to see me this way? Why? Do you miss me so much? Olivia's pupils shrank. What do you mean? Do you pretend to be stupid? 
Vincent knew that she was far less well-behaved than she was in front of Grandpa. She was not a pure white rabbit at all. She was clever and deceitful, and she could also play tricks. But he didn't care, because she could make Grandpa happy. But he hated that she used her tricks on him, and she also involved Grandpa. Olivia, he called her name for the first time, and his face and tone were completely indifferent. Have I ever said that you should be honest and don't play tricks? Of course, Olivia remembered what he said, to be her fiancé obediently. When it was the time, he would dissolve the engagement with her and give her a sum of money. From Vincent's few words, she could probably guess that he misunderstood her. He was not clear about what happened to her in the church family and thought it was her idea that he was called tonight by his grandfather. I haven't, she whispered to herself. Vincent didn't believe her. Olivia only felt stiff all over, and even the posture of sitting with him was extremely wrong. When she stood up slowly, Vincent's eyes flicked when she turned her face away, and he noticed the slap marks on her face covered by fat powder. I remember I have to go to school tomorrow, and I haven't finished my homework. I will take a taxi home. It's a bit late, so I won't disturb Grandpa. You can say goodbye to Grandpa for me. Olivia said these words calmly. Vincent looked at her face, and he didn't make any sound for a moment. Olivia thought he agreed, and walked away. As soon as Olivia left, Robert Church came to the door and brought some gifts. When he saw Vincent, he explained, This is left by the two girls from the White family. Since Olivia was wronged, we naturally cannot accept the so-called apology gift. What happened? Seeing Vincent's puzzled look, Robert Church explained it roughly. In the end, he said, It is true that Olivia was wronged. Just now my father specially called Greg. I heard that the little girl was beaten at home. It is mainly because the video is too confusing. Although Robert Church was older, he was a little afraid of Vincent. Seeing Vincent's expression was cold and ugly, he cleared his throat. I'll leave it here, and then go back. In the sultry weather, there was a sudden heavy rain. The raindrops were big and made a great noise of hitting the window. Vincent suddenly said in a deep voice, Andy. Olivia walked on the road and found that there was no taxi at all. She thought that she would go a little bit more. When there were more people, there would be cars. But she hadn't imagined that there would be a continuous night rain when the house leaked. She walked for less than two minutes before it began to rain heavily. There were tall trees on both sides, without any shelter. Olivia had to put the bag on her head. A sports car roared past, then fell back. The window rolled down, and the people inside said in surprise, Olivia, why are you here? Olivia saw the other party's face through the rain and mist, and she pinched the bag consciously. It was Davis Law. Seeing that Olivia didn't speak, Davis Law touched an umbrella, pushed the door to get off, and ran to Olivia under the umbrella. He saw that Olivia was wet and embarrassed, and raised his hand to pull her. Follow me first. No, thanks. Olivia avoided his hand, and turned to continue walking. She didn't want to have any involvement with Davis Law again. When she saw him, she thought of Jessica. This woman really did it, and used Davis Law to disgust her all her life. Olivia's temperament did not allow any sand in her eyes. Even if she still had feelings for Davis Law, she could bear the pain to pull out the thorn in her heart. Davis Law saw the repulsion of Olivia and felt uncomfortable. His throat not rolled up and down, and he said, Even if you don't want to see me, don't make things hard for yourself, you can just treat me as a driver. Olivia looked around. The wind roared in the dark night, and it was raining heavily. The branches shook violently, and it was particularly bleak. If she did not leave in Davis Law's car, she might not leave here today. Davis Law saw that her attitude was loose, and opened the door of the co-pilot. Olivia stooped into the car, Davis Law bent his lips happily, and then returned to the driving position. Inside the car, Davis Law tentatively said, Why are you here alone? Where is your fiancé? Doesn't he care about you? Olivia did not say anything. Thinking of Vincent's indifferent face, she felt like she had crushed a big stone in her heart, which was more uncomfortable than been slapped by her father. Davis Law saw that she was in a low mood and stopped talking. He hoped there would be a contradiction between Olivia and Vincent. It would be better if they cancel the engagement, and then he can have Olivia again. Davis Law was indulged. For him, what he didn't get was what he wanted most. The car drove about a hundred meters. Suddenly another car came over from behind with the dazzling high beam lights on, turning the steering wheel and blocking straight in front of Davis Law's car. Davis Law's complexion changed, and he pressed hard on the brakes. There was a harsh noise on the road, and Olivia leaned forward largely by inertia, then smashed back into the seat hard. Davis Law gave a swear word, smashed the steering wheel twice with a disgruntled face, and made a rapid horn sound. Damn it, where is the madman from? Does he want to die? The wiper was working ceaselessly, and Olivia recognized Vincent's car first, and she was very shocked. Why did he come? Thinking about it for a second time, this road was the only way back. If Vincent went back, this was the only way. But what did he mean by stopping the car? The Rolls Royce's car window slowly descended, Olivia narrowed her eyes, and saw the man's blurry, but still perfect silhouette. At this time, Olivia's mobile phone rang. She took it out, saw a string of strange mobile numbers, and vaguely guessed out who the other party was. Olivia took a deep breath and answered, Hey. The direct and clear words were clear and strong, which seemed to be colder than the rain. Come here. Olivia hadn't figured out how he had her own phone number when Vincent had already hung up. Davis 
Sloth saw that Olivia started to unfasten her seatbelt. He held her hand. What are you doing? It's Vincent. Olivia didn't explain much, but just said to him, I'll not bother you, you can go. In any case, she was Vincent's fiance. She could not go with Davis Law in this situation. She couldn't make him more dissatisfied with her. If she irritated Vincent, it would not be beneficial to her at all. Davis Law didn't want to let her go, but there was no reason for keeping her staying here. So he could only hold the fire in his stomach and watched Olivia rushing towards Vincent in the rain. Olivia walked obediently to Vincent's car. She did not get in the car but looked at him under the heavy rain and waited for him to give orders. He didn't say that he was going to take her. If she got into the car because of her self-sentimental and was rushed off by him again, it would so shameless. Davis Law was still watching there. She showed off how good Vincent was to her last time. Now she was afraid she would be embarrassed. Vincent saw her standing outside like a fool and his voice was much softer than before. Do you like standing in the rain? Get on the car. Olivia then went around to the other side, opened the door, and got into the car. Almost after Olivia was seated, Andy started the car and left Davis Law's car far behind. Andy felt the air pressure inside the car gradually dissipating, and secretly relieved. When they chased her out just now, they could hardly find anyone. And Andy even said, would there be anything wrong? At that time, Andy believed that if it was not because he was the driver, the second master would directly let him get out. They finally found the madam, but they saw a picture that she was entangled with other men, and got on others' car. When Davis Law's car was far away, Andy he felt that the temperature inside the car was colder than outside. Fortunately, the second master then let him stop the car and chased his wife back. It was quiet in the car, and Andy had already raised the tailgate wisely for a long time. Olivia lowered her head and shivered slightly with her wet body. She remembered that he had a cleansing habit and did not want to dirty his car as much as possible. But the water dripping down the clothes could not be stopped, and soon a small pool of water accumulated. A large towel was thrown over to her, followed by the man's low-pitched voice. Dry yourself. Olivia sighed in her heart. He still still disgusted her for staining his car. She picked up the towel and wiped the water. Her body was still trembling. The next second, the tall man suddenly got mad at Andy. Did I hire you to save me money? Don't you know to turn on the heat in such a cold day? Andy was extremely wronged, and he could only say, it's my fault. Inexplicably being scolded, he couldn't help thinking it in heart. Was 15 degrees cold? Obviously, you were the air conditioner, which was the most resistant to freezing. The heater was turned on, and a large towel was wrapped around her. Olivia was much warmer. Not knowing how long it took, the car reached destination and stopped slowly. Gbert Miller had already greeted him at the door. He received a call from Master Barton in advance, in which said that the second master would bring his wife back tonight. Seeing Olivia was like a drowned chicken, Gbert Miller was shocked and felt terribly distressed. How did you get drenched like this? Quickly, Anna, go and prepare hot water for Madam to take a bath. Bella, go to cook a bowl of ginger tea. Madam, do you want to change the wet clothes to avoid cold? Olivia carefully looked at Vincent in a wheelchair. His complexion seemed to be okay, and he didn't look angry. Seeing Olivia staring at Vincent, G. Bert Miller quipped, if Madam wants to see second master, you can see him later, anyway, there will be a whole night for you. Olivia blushed, quickly took back her sight, and went to take a bath. Vincent looked at Olivia's thin back and frowned, how could this woman be so thin? After a long time, he said to G. Bert Miller, go and prepare for supper, I'm hungry. G. Bert Miller nodded and hurried to call the chef. Olivia wasn't leisurely enough to really take a hot bath. She just took a bath with hot water at random, washed her head, and put on clean clothes and went downstairs. The servants should have been left, and only Vincent was eating slowly in the big dining table. Seeing Olivia, Vincent raised his chin towards the opposite side. G. Bert Miller asked you to drink the ginger tea. Olivia sat down honestly and sipped the steaming ginger tea. After a while, she heard the man ask, why didn't you say you were bullied? As soon as he moved, Olivia raised her eyes, staring at him with large jewel-like eyes under her curled eyelashes. It seemed that he knew the truth. Olivia pretended to be as indifferent as possible. I am used to it, it has been resolved anyway, hasn't it? Vincent was inexplicably indifferent to her appearance of being wronged and self-reliant, and was a little unhappy. With Olivia removing the makeup, the slap print on her face was more obvious. He leaned forward and looked at her momentarily, his thin lips lightly opened. Tonight I misunderstood you, I admit my mistake. But there is one thing I hope you can remember, you are not the second lady of the White family, but my fiancé, you are holding the title of the Barton family. There was a huge difference between the Barton family and the White family. The title of the Barton family was like gold-plated, not troublesome, but absolutely not afraid of trouble. Olivia's fingers shook fiercely, and she didn't expect him to take the initiative to bow his head. She bit the soft meat in her mouth and felt that she was so timid. He just looked at her so seriously and said I admit my mistake, then she was not angry at all, nor felt wronged. She nodded after a while, and she understood the meaning of Vincent's words. I will pay attention in the future and will not lose the Barton family's face. It was simply like playing the piano to the cow. He was too lazy to talk to her more. He wiped his mouth and looked at the food on the table. I can't finish it, you eat the rest. Olivia was around.
arrested and went to the church family without eating at night. After a toss, she had no appetite at all. I'm not hungry, thanks. Vincent looked at her with a pretentious posture and said slowly. The first rule of the Barton family's rules is, can't waste food. Olivia suffocated, obviously it was you who wanted to eat. Vincent leaned on the chair, closed his eyes, and urged, eat quickly. It was okay when she did not eat, as soon as she ate, she had an appetite. Eventually, Olivia performed an eating up action, eating herself full, and finally licking the cherry blossom colored lips, like a full-fledged kitten. Late at night, in study room, Vincent told Andy, go check, yes, sir. Next day, as soon as Olivia arrived at school, she heard the news that Susan had been dropped out. It was said that her behavior was corrupt, and she was ordered to dissuade. There was no specific incident. Soon after that, Olivia knew that the person who secretly filmed the video was Susan. No need to say, it must be that Jessica instructed Susan to do it. But Jessica must have exhausted all the means to block Susan's mouth to stay out of the matter. In the courtyard, after listening to the housekeeper's words, Master Barton was surprised. Has Vincent done it? He said before that he would investigate, but he hadn't done anything yet, and his grandson couldn't wait to resolve it. Yes, the second master ordered late at night, and the girl who made the video today has been dropped out. Eric Barton was surprised at grandson's behavior. So petty he was. At this time, the housekeeper's Bluetooth headset received a message. Looking serious, he rushed to Master Barton to report. Master, the man has got off the plane, and his car is driving here. It is estimated that they will take 20 minutes to arrive at the entrance of the compound. Really? Master Barton was happy and nervous. He stood up and paced twice, and said anxiously. No, I have to wait at the door. Master Barton, who had never blinked in front of the tens of billions of contracts, stood uneasily under the sun at this time. Soon, a car drove over, and it drove exceptionally stable, as if afraid of disturbing the people in it. The car stopped, and the housekeeper hurried forward to open the door. On the large black leather back seat, a little boy sat happily. His two small hands were placed on both sides of the body, and he kept staring at his toes with indifferent gaze. Feeling the door was opened, he turned his head and looked out. At the first glance with the little guy, Master Barton almost shed tears. He stepped forward cautiously and asked softly, Junior, do you remember Grandpa? Junior Barton didn't say anything, just looked at him. In the car not far away, Jason widened his eyes and couldn't believe what he saw. So, who was that kid? Master Barton's attitude towards him was like treating his dear son. His eyes widened in a sudden, frightened by his own thoughts. Could it be the little son of Master Barton? Didn't Grandma Barton pass away for many years? Fearing that the young master would be exposed to the sun, the servants held an umbrella to shade him. And a group of people returned to the Barton family with mighty speed, but the speed was a little slow. Junior Barton didn't let people hug him. He wanted to go by himself, and a group of people could only cater to his pace. Jason watched everyone disappear into his sight. His long arms scattered loosely outside the window, his fingertips tapped a few times towards the car door, and his eyes were full of slyness that broke the good things of others. It had been a long time since I went to the Barton family as a guest, or should I check it out? Jason and Vincent had become good friends since they were very young. Jason often came to Barton's house to have meals and enter and leave the quadrangle courtyard unimpeded. The car drove to the central yard, Jason got out of the car, stretched out, stood outside the door, and shouted, Master Barton, Jason came to see you. Indoors. Master Barton was coaxing Junior Barton to drink water, and when he heard Jason's voice, his eyes widened instantly. How did that boy come? The housekeeper was too late to stop him. Jason had stepped in and struck in, and saw Master Barton squatting on the ground, holding a cartoon water glass in his hand, and facing the little guy. This scene was really scary. Hey, little bun, what's your name? He looked at the mini version of Vincent in front of him, and felt very happy. Junior Barton looked at him silently, suddenly tilting his head, bending his lips, and smiled at Jason. After laughing, he withdrew his gaze and stared at his feet again. Jason felt like he was smashed by a big candy, and his heart instantly became soft and rotten. Master Barton patted Jason on the shoulder and asked excitedly, He, did he just smile at you? Master Barton stood up and cleared his throat, explaining the background of Junior Barton. Jason, this child is actually my great-grandson. He is Chris's child. He was called Junior Barton. Chris's family was busy, so I took Junior and took care of him. Jason suddenly realized, that's it. Chris Clark was the grandson of Master Barton and settled abroad. Master Barton's words changed a bit, and his tone was a bit low. I don't hide from you. Junior's character is lonely, and he doesn't like to communicate with people. I think he likes you very much. Does he have a lonely character? I think it doesn't look like that. Jason looked at the cute little girl in front of him and whistled at him. The whistle attracted Junior Barton's attention. He looked at Jason, followed the same steps as before, smiled, and then retracted his gaze. Master Barton was worried and sighed, and he said to Jason, Junior is still unable to speak until now. Some children were able to speak later than others, people did not care much at it first, but they slowly went beyond the normal range. Junior Barton was three years old. No matter how his parents induced or taught him, he could not speak. Seeing that the foreign technology was not effective, Master Barton thought about 
about taking him back, maybe the domestic medicine was effective. Jason didn't expect that such a cute little guy could not speak, and he was very sad. He patted his chest. Master Barton, you can rest assured that I will definitely do my best to help the little bun. On a quiet afternoon, the White family was quiet, and neither Greg nor Olivia was there. In the bedroom upstairs, Jessica was complaining with his mother. She threw her pillow annoyedly and said angrily, I found that the little slut got better and better after getting engaged with Vincent, and she could aviate danger every time. I told you a long time ago, don't be so hurried. Carol sighed, has that student been dealt with well? Don't you afraid that he would shake you out at that time? Rest assured, I have given $200,000 to her. She is not stupid and does not dare to provoke me, and I have dealt with it. Even if she shakes it out, I can say that she framed me. Jessica was very confident. Carol nodded, no longer focusing on Olivia, and said seriously, okay, you have taken enough time off this vacation. During this time, you only have taken the endorsement, and you couldn't disappear on the screen for too long. You should still have a lot of a work, otherwise fans will like other new stars. I inquired that James Wilde wanted to shoot a new drama. You must take down the position of the heroine. Jessica's face became serious. The fight with Olivia was on small scale, and besides, Olivia did not have a high status, and she could figure it out. James Wilde was a new generation of Dark Horse directors. He had directed two plays and won the award for the best work in that year. Although Jessica was the movie queen, it was already a few years ago. In these years, she did not pay much attention to the several movies she acted in. She only wanted to build a good relationship with investors, and the score of her films were extremely low, which disappointed her fans. She must hurry to have a good work to save the situation, and James Wilde's play was the best choice. When was the audition? Julie Hepburn didn't tell me. Julie Hepburn was Jessica's agent. Carol said angrily, my stupid daughter, the news has not come out yet, so we have a lot of time to prepare. I have checked it, James Wilde is stubborn, he is addicted to shooting movies, and his wife does not like to participate in the event. But they have a daughter in the same school with Olivia. Speaking that, Jessica understood everything. Her beautiful eyes glowed with brilliance, after all, it was easy to get close to a little girl. Outside the door, a figure left quietly. Entering her room, Olivia took away her cosmetic bag from the drawer and walked away from the White's house lightly, as if she had never returned. At 11.30 in the middle of the night, it was not long before the nightlife began. In the lively bar of Zero, Olivia lived at the time and she could leave in half an hour. In the afternoon, she received the message halfway through the class, and the bar attendant Ella asked Olivia to replace her. A few minutes before 12, Ella hurried back to work in the middle of the night. She took the uniform handed over from Olivia and said, Thank you. Thank you for replacing me today. Otherwise, I will be definitely buckled the bonus of full attendance. It is nothing. You can call me if you need any help in the future. Olivia said goodbye to the other party and took his bag to leave. There was a noise not far away, which caused many people to watch. Olivia saw that several men were grabbing a woman. One of these men had water on his face and he yelled, Fucking, you dare to splash me. Today, I will let you know how powerful I am. You just wait for me to beat you. She never liked to get involved in the business unrelated to her, and this kind of situation was quite common in the bar. If it became a little severe, the manager would handle it. But, Olivia made a confused sound in her mouth if she knew this woman, whether she should involve it or not. Maggie was in a bad mood today, so she casually entered a small bar to have a drink. But who knew that she met a disgusted man who continued trying to chat with her, with a face full of meat and beer belly. Why didn't he take a piss and look at himself? The other party kept harassing, and she threw a glass of wine over him, which angered the other party. No one knew the identity of Maggie in such a small bar. There were so many vulgar people who wanted to act on such a delicate young lady. Maggie's intoxication dissipated when she was caught by several men. She shouted her identity aloud, but the other party did not believe it at all. Maggie was very afraid, and she looked around, but they all waited to see a wonderful play. No one would help her. In the flurry, she saw a pair of beautiful eyes, which she seemed to have seen before. She yelled, Olivia? At this time, Olivia had already withdrawn her gaze, put on a hoodie hat, covered most of her face, and left indifferently. Maggie was like instantly sank to the bottom of the valley, and the only person she knew left. She really had no way out today. She didn't complain. It needn't say that she had a contradiction with Olivia before, and even if Olivia helped her, she could not defeat these men. How could she save her by committing danger? Maggie was really terrified. With tears on her face, she was desperate, but at the same time someone shouted, Hey, the police are here. Hearing the word police, several men unconsciously let go of Maggie. Maggie went out of the bar and told the details of this matter to the policewoman. After hearing this, the policewoman stared at the men with an angry look, and then she taught Maggie, Are you still a student? You should study hard and don't come to this kind of social place. Girls need to know how to protect themselves. If there were no well-intentioned people calling the police to save you, then something serious would happen, do you know? Maggie was obviously scared and nodded, and then she asked, curiously, Police sister, who called the police? I can't
can't tell you this, the police have an obligation to keep the secret of the reporter's identity. Looking at the time, it was midnight, and the police drove the police car, waving a gesture to Maggie. Come on, I will take you home. Maggie got in the car, and the car stopped at the red light. She looked through the window, and saw a black slender figure, wearing a hat around the corner, walking leisurely. Olivia didn't fall asleep until 2 o'clock in the morning. Having no class in the morning, she slept until noon. When she went to the kitchen to get some food, Olivia unexpectedly saw Greg at home. She paused and greeted. Dad, didn't you go to the company? Greg saw her, answered yes, and then waved at her. Olivia froze for a moment, then took the milk in her hand and walked across to Greg to sit down. After being rushed to Barton's family that day, it was the first time Olivia met her father, and the atmosphere between them was very embarrassing. Greg knew that he had wronged his daughter. He received a call from Jeff Church that day and knew the truth of the matter. After a moment of silence, he said, Olivia, that day I misunderstood you. I was too impulsive and beat you, can you forgive me? Olivia was surprised by her father's attitude. For so many years, she had always been above her, and he would not take it seriously even if he did something wrong. He had never spoken to her so lovingly. She had never tasted her father's love and was stunned for a while. Olivia squeezed her hands and said softly in her mouth, How could I blame you? I know my dad didn't do it on purpose. Seeing this, Greg took a sip of tea and slowly said, How have you been with Vincent recently? Olivia recalled the days spent with Vincent and said humbly, It's okay. Although you are engaged to him, we two family have never met. There are big barriers of entering the Barton family. But as an elder, it is strange for me to come to his house in person. I asked the assistant to prepare some gifts. You can bring them to Vincent as a little gift from our family. Greg said slowly. Olivia hesitated. She didn't want to go, but she didn't dare to disobey her father's words. When she was a child, she knew that girls must be reserved and self-respecting, but Greg pushed her as a commodity and sold her to others. Of course she did not dare to say this, so she just responded lightly. I see. Having promised Greg, Olivia had to carry things to Vincent's house at night. She roughly looked at these gifts. The total price was almost 10000 It was not particularly expensive, nor did it seem stingy. Gbert Miller saw her and walked over happily. Madam, why do you come suddenly tonight? Next time you could tell us in advance that you would come, and I will let the driver pick you up. No need to trouble you, Olivia said embarrassedly. It's not troublesome, or the second master would be distressed. Olivia smiled a bit stiff. What a terrible sentence. She looked around and felt that the house was exceptionally quiet today and said with expectation, is Vincent here? Yes, yes, on the third floor. Olivia felt lost, okay. Olivia hadn't been to the third floor yet. It was said to be a place for exercise. She could imagine how Vincent, whose legs and feet were inconvenient, could do exercise and went upstairs with curiosity. What she saw at first sight was a large space with various fitness equipment and a picture that made people's noses bleed. Vincent was naked on the upper body and with a pair of loose pants on the lower body, sitting on the clean floor with sweat stains. His perfect abdominal muscles and mermaid line make people's hearts beat faster under the background of the gloss of sweat. At a distance of two steps from Vincent, Andy was also disheveled and panting. On the ground were thrown several white objects similar to toilet paper. I'm sorry, I didn't see anything. When she met Vincent's sight, Olivia said with calm expression and then slowly turned around and ran down with the speed of 100 meter dash. Andy was very tired, looked at the staircase where Olivia disappeared and looked at Vincent suspiciously. Ha, huh, second master, why did Madame apologize? Vincent looked at the direction where Olivia disappeared with a somber expression. When he heard Andy's words, his eyes shot like a knife. Andy was so frightened that he felt aggrieved. He spent the afternoon punching with the second master, and now he still had to bear the cold eyes of him, which was too difficult for him. He silently picked up the scattered white bandage on the ground. He suffered a few injuries to his abdomen and arm some time ago. Now it was almost fine, so when he punched, he untied and threw it on on the ground. Running downstairs, Olivia sat on the sofa, feeling very complicated. Con man, she originally believed that he and Andy were all right, but actually she saw that picture again. Just as she said, how could it be so easy to bring him back to normal? Suddenly realizing that she was particularly upset, Olivia's expression immediately became indifferent. What matters to do with her? Not knowing how long after that, with a sound of ding, the elevator door on the first floor opened. Vincent came out from inside in a wheelchair. He should have taken a shower, his hair was messy and slightly damp and he was wearing a black home uniform. He was still a masculine sportsman just now, but when he put on his clothes, he soon became an ascetic male. Vincent was inconvenienced, so an elevator was specially installed in the villa for him to go up and down the stairs. As soon as Olivia saw him, she recalled the picture she saw just now, her eyes blinked, and the blood that had finally cooled down began to heat up again. At a glance, Vincent knew that the woman's mind was unhealthy again. He closed his eyes and gritted his teeth to give a sentence. Throw away the mess in your head. Olivia quickly looked away and subconsciously licked her dry lips. How did he know what she was thinking? However, she said sternly, well, I wasn't thinking about anything. Oh, I came here today to give you some gifts. My dad said that the two family of us had never
never had a chance to meet and let me send you some gifts. She changed the topic rigidly. Vincent's eyes fell on a pile of gifts beside the sofa, and he glanced at them, but said nothing. During dinner, Olivia sat like on a needle. For the purpose of rendering the atmosphere, Gbert Miller set up the dining table as a candlelight dinner, and there were a few bright roses in the middle of it. It would be okay if only she and Vincent were here, she would just be embarrassed. The problem was that Andy was standing behind Vincent, staring at her with a bodyguard posture. The deep vision of him made Olivia always feel that he was thinking about how to kill her silently. She resisted the fear, raised her head quietly, and offered an extremely friendly smile to Andy. Andy was just wondering, what was the charm of the madam that could attract second master so much? But he didn't know that when he was thinking, he was staring at her, receiving Olivia's smile. Andy was about to return a smile when he suddenly felt the cold and harsh eyes of his second master, and immediately lowered his head. Vincent saw that Olivia and Andy were talking through expressions, and the air pressure around him was much lower. He looked down at Andy. You don't need to be here, go out. Olivia said, yes, you must also be hungry. Hurry and go to dinner. It's not good for your stomach to stay hungry. Vincent looked at Olivia coolly. Olivia shrank her necks like a quail. She lowered her head and poked the dishes in the bowl. Her face is annoyed. She shouldn't have said so much. Was this not to steal Vincent's credit? But she also wanted to have a good relationship with Andy. After Andy went out, only Vincent and Olivia remained in the whole place. Vincent didn't like to talk much, and Olivia didn't say anything. In a moment, there was only the sound of tableware colliding with dishes. Maybe it was too quiet. Vincent stopped his meal and looked at the opposite side. Then he saw that Olivia was busy, and it was up to the plate of shrimp in front of her. Not knowing when she put on disposable gloves, peeling shrimp one by one, peeling them for a while. And the gloves were all covered with red oil. Vincent didn't care much, and after a few minutes, a bowl of peeled shrimp suddenly appeared in front of him. The shrimp were all intact and looked delicate and attractive. Vincent looked at Olivia with surprise. She raised her chin at the shrimp, you eat. Then she thought of something, raised her hand and shook her gloves, adding, it's clean. Vincent said nothing, staring at the bowl of shrimp for a long time before picking up the chopsticks. If this was seen by someone who knew his temperament, he would be absolutely shocked. Olivia asked happily, what else do you want to eat? I will pick up for you. Vincent noticed that Olivia didn't eat any shrimp, looked at the remaining shrimp in the bowl and asked, don't you eat it? Olivia waved her hand, I can't eat it. I'm allergic to seafood. So, was this specially for him? Vincent froze for a few seconds and stopped eating. He leaned back on the back of the chair and looked at her in a leisurely manner. His magnetic and cold voice was full of curiosity. So sensible, were you in trouble outside? What? I was very sensible and obedient by nature. Olivia straightened up and emphasized, and then her eyes turned, embarrassedly saying, In fact, I am very grateful to you, and I am very grateful to Grandpa, too. Last time in the church family, Grandpa was there to protect me. I did not expect him to take it so seriously, and just the next day he found out the person who took the video and made her drop out of school. Grandpa is so kind to me, I don't know how to repay him. Olivia noticed that his expression had changed and asked, What's wrong? Vincent had something in his heart, but he didn't say it. He took a deep breath, It's okay. During the rest time, the man looked cold and stopped talking to Olivia, obviously he was in a bad mood. Olivia felt inexplicable, but she didn't have the courage to ask, and she silently ate her own meal. After the meal, Vincent touched his pocket with one hand and said to her lukewarmly, You have performed well today, I will give you a reward. Olivia's eyes brightened. Reward? Would he give me money? If the big president gave her money, it would be a lot. Vincent raised his hand and threw it. Olivia raised her hands flexibly to catch it. After staring at what was in her hand, she was startled. A car key. This is. Would you like to give me a car? Yep. Olivia looked at the gold-plated symbol on the car key that symbolized money and made a swallowing action, peeling a bowl of shrimp to the president to get a car. Who dared to believe it? Although he said it was the reward, this key had already been prepared by Vincent. He noticed that she usually went out by foot, like she walked alone in the rainy night before. She would still encounter some people with bad ideas. It can't happen again, thank you, but you needn't give it to me. Olivia put the car key in front of Vincent and explained, I don't know how to drive. She did not want to spend money on a driver license, and she did not have a car and could not afford such consumer goods. The most important thing was that this car was given by Vincent. She dared not sell it. She could not sell it, but maintain it every day, which was too distressed. She would rather he give money to her. Vincent raised her eyebrows, and he never thought that she didn't know how to drive at her age. So what other ways do you take besides walking? Taking the bus or the subway? Vincent frowned, what else? Olivia blinked, well, skateboard, could it be one way? She was very skilled at skateboarding and had no problem traveling. She could skate on the trail without waiting for the traffic lights, but later she stopped using it because she was worried that it might make Greg unhappy. Vincent didn't ask any more and took back the car key. Olivia was about to breathe a sigh of relief when she heard the man say, I will give you a driver. 
It's too expensive. I'm a college student. I really don't need a car. And when I'm walking on the road, no one knows my identity, and I don't have to worry about being embarrassing. Olivia thought hard about the reason. I'll pay for the car's fuel and maintenance fees, and the driver's salary will also be paid by me. Is there any problem? No. Somehow, Olivia had a car and a driver. She felt it was a dream. It was unreal. It was not until Andy flickered in front of her eyes that she suddenly realized it was true. Exhaling slowly, Olivia stood up and prepared to go upstairs to her room. When she was halfway up, she thought that her bag was still left in the living room and went downstairs again. When passing by the utility room, she heard there was a conversation between Gbert Miller and Andy. What are you doing here? Get a copy of the previous information for second master. Is second master in the study room? Yep. Immediately followed by Gbert Miller's dissatisfied mutter. Is it worth staying in the study room? The young couple should return to the bedroom at this time and develop their relationships. When Olivia heard this, she touched her forehead awkwardly. Andy was so upset to hear this. Andy said something in a low voice, and Gbert Miller said. Of course, the second master was very attentive to his wife. When he knew that his wife had been misunderstood and beat Miss Church's family, he immediately contacted the principal of the school and asked her to let the person who made the video go. Who else has this honor? Olivia stayed in the corner, digesting Gbert Miller's words one by one. Therefore, it was Vincent's idea to make Susan withdraw from school, not Grandpa's. She remembered Vincent's speechlessness and uncomfortable moment when she mentioned this matter at the dinner table. At this time, Andy had found the information and planned to send it to Vincent. Olivia was too late to avoid Andy and met him when he came out. She rubbed her lips embarrassedly. She really wanted to find a ground seam to get in immediately when she met him. Gbert Miller came out behind Andy, and after seeing Olivia, he was overjoyed and took the things in Andy's hand. Madam, this is the information requested by the second master. Do you want to go upstairs? Please send it to him by the way. Olivia looked down at the stack of paper in front of her and hesitantly looked at Andy. When Andy nodded at her, she responded, Okay, I'll send it. In the study room, Olivia knocked on the door and stepped forward to put the information on Vincent's table. This is the information you want. Vincent responded without lifting up his eyelids. Olivia looked at Vincent, thinking of Gbert Miller's words in her mind, wanting to ask something, but she didn't know how to say. Vincent raised his eyes and looked at her suspiciously. Is there anything else? No, nothing. Back in the room, Olivia pounced on the bed, thumped on the mattress silently for several times, and thought she was so timid. At this time, there was a sound of ding-dong from the phone, which was the sound of receiving the message. She took out her cell phone. After seeing who the sender was, she stood up quickly. Olivia clicked on this file. The document was quickly loaded, and then there was a large and fairly detailed introduction of the character's information. At the top was a picture of a middle-aged man with a name next to it, James Wilde. Thinking of overhearing the conversation between Carol and Jessica that day, Olivia sneered at the corner of her mouth. She lied on the bed, carefully reading the information, and studied it for a long time. Next day, Olivia was walking on her way to the school library. When she was almost there, a hindrance suddenly appeared and blocked her way. Maggie had a complex look on her face, her temper was not as strong as usual, and she was rarely a bit bewildered. You should know why I came to you. Olivia nodded, it's time for the exam. As soon as it was time for the exam, she became popular and already had quite a few people urging her for the notes, and she was about to go to the library to organize them. Maggie's facial expression stiffened for a few seconds, and she spat out with difficulty. No! She tugged at the hem of her coat and said with an awkward look. That day, thank you for calling the police and saving me. Not me. Olivia denied it without even thinking about it. Don you tried to lie to me, the police told me all about it. Olivia turned silent when Maggie looked at her, suddenly laughed out loud and with a I'm really smart tone. Look, it's really you. Just one little trick already made you tell the truth. Olivia didn't expect that she herself would jump into the pit set by Maggie and instantly felt that she had been insulted. With her face taking on an embarrassing expression, Maggie took Olivia's arm and smiled. I'm not those who don't feel grateful for others' help. From now on, we're friends. Olivia is a bit dumbfounded, wondering, shouldn't we ask others to be friends with us in a polite way? However, it was the straightforward nature of Maggie that made her very clear about whom or what she hated or loved. Since the lie had been poked, Olivia didn't bother to pretend anymore and just said, pay a little attention in the future, you won't necessarily be so lucky next time. I just wanted to seek solace and drink that day, and who knew that something like that would happen to me? Seeming to recall something sad and annoying, Maggie gritted her teeth. That day, the boy I had a crush on for two years was dating someone else. Olivia didn't expect that the spoiled Miss Church would be lovesick. Maggie looked at her sincerely. I'm actually not feeling good. Can I confide in you? Olivia was startled, for this spoiled young lady really didn't treat her like an outsider. Olivia wanted to refuse, but looking at these expectant eyes, she somehow could not bear to reject her. And when the words were at the tip of her tongue, she said, you only have an hour. Maggie's eyes lit up and she nodded her head. On the rooftop, the first thing Maggie said was not about her love affair, but to apologize for what she once did to Olivia. She explained 
all this time, I wasn't targeting you. At bottom, it has something to do with myself. Few people knew that Maggie had a younger half-sister named Zoe Church, who was born of the same father as Maggie, but a different mother. Just like what happened to Olivia's family, Robert Church also cheated on his wife when she was pregnant with Maggie. However, Zoe was very different from Olivia, because she wasn't acknowledged by the church family and wasn't considered a church family member until now. Zoe and Maggie were only a year apart in terms of age and also attended the same university. When she was very young, Zoe even lived in the church family for a while. At that time Maggie was too young to understand anything about it. She only knew that there was a little sister in the family that she could play with, and she happily shared all her goodies with Zoe. However, since then, she has been frequently making mistakes in the family members' minds. She did not even know why Zoe's doll ran under her bed and was cut to pieces by scissors. Why there were pegs on Zoe's bed, and why she was blamed to push Zoe into pool when it was obvious that she fell into the water by herself. Listening to Maggie's talking, Olivia were struck dumb by how calculating a four-year-old kid was. Maggie kept talking, later on, it was grandpa that saw through Zoe's mind. My grandpa suddenly changed his mind and kicked her out of the church family. However, my dad thinks that I forced Zoe to leave. Although he didn't say anything about me, deep down in his heart, I've long been a brutal and wayward child. After my dad was found cheating, his relationship with my mom went away. And now they're just pretending to be a loving couple on the outside, but they are already separated in private. In everyone's mind, she is a pampered princess who doesn't need to worry about making a living and has no worries in her life. Even if she makes mistakes, there are always people helping her out. She looked towards Olivia with a hint of guilt in her eyes. It's because my experience is kind of similar to yours. So after hearing sister Jessica talked about your family's situation, I. So, you feel like you and Jessica have gone through the same thing and think I'm a bad guy just like Zoe, right? Olivia followed. Maggie lowered her head, I'm sorry. Having known Olivia for quite a time, Maggie already found that Olivia was not like Zoe at all. Olivia didn't take it seriously. After all, she was so pretty that many people hated her. So, what about the boys you like? Maggie puckered her lips, silent. Somehow, a thought occurred to Olivia. Maybe, Zoe is the girl that he is dating. Maggie was shocked and her lips moved, you're still smart. Zoe Church, why does this name sound so familiar, Olivia thought. Suddenly, she was stunned, figuring out where she had seen the name Zoe Church. It's on Holt Bush's profile. Holt Bush's daughter was called Yulia Bush, the prettiest girl in the school, and her bestie was Zoe. In the end, Olivia didn't make it to the library, and she got an unexpected phone call from the manager of Heaven's Temptation, who offered her a good job with one night, 2,000 bucks. Olivia was pretty and honey-lipped, so when there was any good part-time job available, the manager would ask if she'd like to take them. Since last time when Olivia had been drugged by Jessica and had mistakenly gotten into trouble with Vincent, she hadn't been to Heaven's Temptation again. She was afraid of being spotted by Jessica and wanted to disappear for a while before coming back to there. Olivia was about to reject this offer, but after the manager told her that tonight a masquerade ball was going to be held there, she became interested because she wouldn't be recognized by other if she wore a mask. Olivia was tempted by the 2,000 bucks and accepted that offer. On the night of feasting and revelry, the Heaven's Temptation was extraordinarily lively. Intoxicated with drinks and money, the stage lobby on the first floor was packed with people walking around. The spending in Heaven's Temptation was so high that the ticket for tonight's masquerade ball alone costs $10,000 per person. Wearing a bunny girl costume with a cute bunny earpiece on her head, a silver and white feather mask on her face, and a perfect smile, Olivia was carrying a tray weaving through the crowd. Every now and then a guest took the wine glass on her tray, and Olivia idly looked around, seeing all those masked faces, momentarily wondering which one could be Bruno Hart. Bruno had sent her a message that he would come to have fun tonight, but she was too busy to even reply to him. Heaven's Temptation was a very important place for Olivia, because she can earn money in a short period of time and meet some useful people there. Bruno met her in Heaven's Temptation, and was one of the few people in the upper class circle who knew her true identity. When Bruno saw Olivia for the first time, he already noticed her exquisite and perfect face even under her heavy makeup. Plus, with her model-liked body shape, he kept chasing after Olivia and asked her to model as if she was the masterpiece that he had been long expecting. Olivia earned money secretly, so naturally she didn't say yes to him, but as time went by, the connection between these two was slowly established. Suddenly, a commotion occurred in the lobby, and Olivia looked back and saw that the special security team who would only be sent out in emergencies had quickly entered in and suppressed the noisy crowd. Immediately afterwards, she heard someone complaining aside. What a bummer! How can you bring a child in here without knowing what kind of place it is? I can't believe you lost it. Quickly, the manager came over, gathered the waiters into a conference room, and lowered his voice. From now on, you guys split up and go find a three-year-old child by looking through the entire Heaven's Temptation. And if you find him, you will be rewarded with $30,000. The crowd was whispering, three zero 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 dollars Whose kid was worth so much? Olivia noticed that a bit of excitement flashed across the manager's face. Thinking of the manager's kindness to her in the past, she couldn't bear to tell the truth. It was very obvious that the reward must
must be more than $30,000, and the money that the manager concealed would be swallowed by him. As for how much money he concealed, by the look of the manager, it looked like a large sum. Nonetheless, $30,000 was indeed quite a lot. Olivia cheered herself up. She was determined to find that kid. Just in a few minutes, a blanket search was underway in Heaven's Temptation. It's like they were going to turn this place upside down. Upstairs, in a private room, Jason's face was ashen, grabbing his subordinate's collar and gritting his teeth. Why didn't you tell me there would be a ball today, huh? If there were offenders among those many people, Jason didn't dare to think any further. Master, you always don't concern yourself with the business in the ground floor, so. The subordinate explained with shivering legs. Jason took out his cell phone and quickly dialed while anxiously ordering. I don't care, block the exit and don't allow anyone to leave. Even if this place is demolished today, you have to find the kid. A group of people were scared, crawling out of the room to find that kid. Olivia thought that the mask was too troublesome. Wearing a mask really narrowed her view, affecting her in finding that kid, so she took off it and hold it in her hands. Heaven's Temptation had eight floors and countless rooms, covering a large area. Olivia thought that children love to play, so if the kid was in a crowded place, he must have been seen long ago. Therefore, he probably ran to some empty room to have fun. She searched down the floors, room by room in order, and somehow, she noticed that there was a room whose door was not completely closed, but left a small slit, and it was dark inside. Olivia took a step over, and carefully opened the door. The room was quiet and empty inside. It's like on one was in this room. Olivia switched the light on and swept around, seeing nothing unusual. Then she prepared to leave. When her body just turned around, an extremely small rustling sound caught her attention. Olivia licked her lower lip and took a tentative step outward, and the rustling emerged again. Now that the source of the sound was identified, she dropped her gaze under the bed and quietly walked over. The sheets were lifted violently, and the little one inside was exposed. His little hands were pinching a piece of imported snowflake pastry and sending it toward his mouth. Olivia's gaze suddenly met a pair of flawless and innocent lovely eyes. It's like a heart seemed to have smashed on the cotton, soft and fluffy. She gulped, never having seen such a good-looking child. Immediately thereafter, Olivia's pretty face released an infinite amount of surprise. $30,000. Ahem, my little friend, are you lost? Your family is looking for you, will you come out? Olivia tried her best to keep her tone as gentle as possible for fear of scaring him. The little boy just blinked his eyes and stared at her. Olivia was afraid to scare the $30,000 away. After thinking for a little while, she said familiarly, you like to eat snowflake pastry, right? So, do I. It's delicious, right? Zach Barton looked down earnestly at the snowflake pastry in his hand. It seemed like that the time was frozen. Just when Olivia felt he would keep staring at the pastry, the kid started to move. He slowly reached out his hand towards Olivia, and then put the pastry in the palm of her hand. Olivia swallowed, is this for me? The little kid nodded. Olivia was really into snowflake pastry. She licked her lower lip and ate it in two bites, happily saying, it's delicious, thank you. The little kid pursed his lips and smiled, his eyes glowing with excitement. Olivia reached out her hand and said tentatively, it's very dirty under the bed. You might as well climb over a little bit and let sister, auntie take you out? Olivia was going to call herself sister, but when she thought she already had a fiance, it was better to call her auntie. Zach looked at Olivia's elegant hands and his face looked as if he was making an extremely important decision. After a while, his hand testily moved forward and back several times in the air and finally rest cautiously and solemnly in the palm of Olivia's hand. When she touched the soft little hand, Olivia's fondness for this little kid multiplied in her heart, wanting to give him all the best things in the world. Olivia didn't like children, because she felt that they were annoyed and always cried and ate. But she inexplicably liked this child in front of her from the bottom of her heart. She took the small hand in her palm and lowered herself down, extremely gently taking him out under the bed. Olivia picked up Zach and couldn't resist reaching out and poking his soft face, amazed at how good his hand felt. Zach looked at Olivia and poked her face in the same way, then clenched his hands into fists, his large eyes exuding a feeling of pleasure. He slightly curved his lips and smiled at her. Olivia was melted by him so much and felt desperate to possess this little kid and take him away. She wondered what kind of couple were so lucky to have this little angel. Looking at him, Olivia gradually felt something wrong. How could she feel that this child looked so familiar? Not far away, someone saw Zach held in Olivia's hands and exclaimed excitedly. He was found. He was found. Zach was clearly shocked, with his face turning pale. He trembled and buried his face in Olivia's neck, his two small hands wrapping themselves around Olivia's neck. Be good, don't be afraid. It's all right. Auntie protects you. Olivia instantly appeased him and patted his back gently. Just in case, Olivia put on the mask again. Upon wearing the mask, a bunch of people ran over. Olivia was startled when seeing coming in the forefront was actually Jason. The moment Jason saw Zach safe and sound, he finally relieved. He touched his chest. Thank God, God bless us. Zach, you really made your uncle frightened a lot. Olivia looked down at the kid in her arms, realizing that he was called Zach. Jason looked towards the person who had found Zach. She wore a mask and a bunny girl costume. 
costume, and looked like a waiter here. Then, he was stunned by the two arms that were holding Zack, stretching his fingers and stammering. You are actually, actually holding him. Zack originally hated being touched by anyone, even Zack's favorite person hadn't touched him yet. Olivia mistakenly interpreted it as she was not qualified to touch the noble young master, so she crouched down, trying to put the little kid off. However, Zack was holding her neck tightly, and didn't want to let go. He was burrowing into her arms, with a reluctant face. At first, Jason was upset, but when he saw this, he hastened to stop it. No, 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 you just hold him, don't make him angry. This kid was indeed a little king. Olivia had to hold Zack, and she followed Jason. At the box on the top floor, Olivia stood still, and when she saw Jason looking at Zack ingratiatingly, her eyes suddenly widened. She knew who the little one looked like. He looked like Vincent. As soon as she realized this, the door was opened again. Next second, Andy pushed stranger Vincent in. Even though that man was sitting in a wheelchair, he still had strong aura, and when he came in, the whole room was covered with an additional layer of oppression. Olivia froze like a statue, the moment she saw Vincent. Vincent immediately saw Zack, and looked towards Jason with doubt, waiting for his explanation. A while ago, Jason called Vincent, incoherently asking him to hurry over. In that phone call, Vincent only knew that a child had been lost. Jason looked at Vincent and crumpled his neck in fear, opening his mouth to clarify the little kid's identity. Vincent, this is your nephew. Master Barton just took him back from abroad the other day. He is the son of Chris Clark. Vincent didn't keep close contact with his aunt's family who were far away abroad. He didn't overreact, only asking Jason. Why did you bring Chris's son to this place? Jason lowered his head in shame. He just followed Master Barton's words to play more with little Zack. He originally wanted to take Zack to a private amusement park today, but there were impromptu papers to sign in Heaven's Temptation. So he came over first, put Zack in his room, and went to sign. However, it took him such a long time. When he came back from his busy work, finding Zack had disappeared. Thinking of that, Jason turned his head to the bunny girl, asking, where did you find him? Sensing that Vincent was looking at her, Olivia lowered her voice to disguise herself, answering, under the bed in a guest room. Fearing that she would be recognized, she quietly put Zack on the ground and hastily said, boss, if it's okay, I'd like to return to my work. Not waiting for a response, she took quick steps towards the door, and just two steps in, she was stopped. Oops, her bunny tail got gripped. She twisted her head stiffly and saw two hands on her tail, one large and one small. Zack raised his head and looked at Olivia. The little hand tugged on Olivia's tail hard, with a kind of if you don't hold me, I won't let go of my hand attitude, and the other hand was Vincent's. He stared at her. One couldn't discern his emotion, as if a thick layer of fog covered his eyes. Jason looked at this scene with bewilderment. How come these two precious and detached persons are suddenly so enthusiastic about a little waiter? Olivia glanced sideways at Vincent and muttered in her mind. He couldn't have recognized me. I had makeup on and a mask on my face. He certainly didn't recognize her. Jason came over, you know her? Vincent looked at him coolly and majestically. You guys go out. No one dares to disobey Vincent. Jason was thrown out, and Andy was thrown out. But Zack refused to go out. He looked at Vincent with a little bit of hostility on his face, his small body leaning towards Olivia's lap. Vincent hung his eyes, making an icy eye contact with Zack. The cold, intimidating gaze could clearly make the legs of grown-ups shiver. But Zack was not afraid at all, clutching the hem of Olivia, his face looking very firm. Jason came back to take Zack out, but he didn't dare to hug him, and could only persuade. Zack, go out with uncle first. If this pissed off him, the big demon, Vincent would not care about the blood relationship between uncle and nephew. Olivia was also scared to death, feeling the temperature in the room keep dropping. The chill from the man was enough to freeze people. She whispered, will Zack follow uncle out? Zack headed up to look at Olivia for a moment. Then, with a hellish expression on Jason's face, he let go of his hand. Zack also ignored Jason and went out with small steps of his own. Only Vincent and Olivia were left in the room. Olivia anxiously touched the mask on her face, unable to read Vincent's mind. Vincent's long, slender fingers casually flicked away the lighter and lit a cigarette, looking at her with no expression in the dense smoke. Come here. It took such a long time for this man to open his mouth. Olivia took a cautious step and walked to his side. The man was in a wheelchair, one standing and one sitting. He didn't look up at her either. With cigarette in his mouth, he continued to order. Crouch down, wearing a skirt, she would easily go naked if she completely knelt down. So Olivia was kneeling down with only one leg, and the knee was pressed on the cold marble floor, which made her painful. Now, it was Vincent that looked at her with eyes hanging down. Suddenly, two of his fingers cupped her tiny chin, his gaze moving from her mask to her tight t-shirt, super short skirt, and bunny tail respectively. Olivia forced herself to look into those dark, dark eyes, just as her heart was racing with nervousness, and heard him ask, you are the staff here? Air, yes. Barmaid? Olivia froze, and then a rage rose up in her heart. Did this mean that he was interested in her and was going to, to take her to bed? Thinking of the scene he saw with Andy at the gym that day, Olivia turned furious. This man's private life was too messy. He pretended to be not Randy. Wasn't he afraid of getting 
being sick? Olivia looked displeased and replied coldly, I am a proper staff member. Vincent's eyes glided over her exposed snow white skin with a sneer as he cupped her chin harder. You want to talk about decency in place like this? Who crawled naked on my bed in the first place? 